Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Long time no see, I don't feel like I've done one of these videos for quite a while now. But yes, if you're new here, I'm Shannon and I'm a pet portrait and wildlife artist and I specialise in coloured pencils. If that's of interest to you, then keep watching. So, today is actually a Wednesday. I'm currently doing my social media freelance work that I do for a local home workshop. I've spoken a bit about it before. I've never really shown you that much because I do a lot of it on my phone and I film these videos on my phone. I'll show you a little bit of what I'm up to um, just to catch you up because it's it's been so long. I've not filmed anything for a while for a vlog because Scott's been at home for the past few weeks um, and you know me, I do not like filming stuff like this when there's people around. Um, but yeah, I was kind of like itching to get back to it and I have been patiently waiting for him to go back to work. So I've got so much to catch you up on but for now I'm going to get on with this two hours of freelance work that I do every morning and then I will speak to you properly later. It's actually disgusting how many tabs I have open at the minute, but this is the sort of stuff I do, so I'm doing a little post that I'm scheduling. I do like the Instagram and Facebook posts, stories, I reply to like customer queries, just all the stuff that keeps it running for Lisa, the girl that I do it for. I used to work in the shop when I was like first starting my art business and that really helped with having a little bit of extra money while I built up my business and now I just do the social media from home. Hmm, which one do I go for today? Hmm, let's do this one. So before I get stuck into my to-do list for today, there's something that I wanted to share with you that has been sat on the top of my printer up there for the past few weeks while I've been waiting to film this video because I wanted to unwrap it and like get my reaction for the vlog. So a brand called Uliveri got in touch with me and asked if they would be able to send me one of their items and I had a look at the website and I was instantly like, yes, absolutely, I would love that. They do quite like luxury loungewear and that is right up my street as somebody who spends a lot of time at home and likes to be comfortable around the house so I was really interested in collaborating with them so I am going to unwrap the item right now I've been very excited so this is the brand Uliveri and let's have a little look Ooh. oh so this is how it comes I love that that's really nicely packaged. And this is the Floral Olive Kimono Robe. So let's have a look. Of course, I chose the green option. Look at that. It's like a little gift. Ooh. Oh, this is nice. So this is the robe. I've just completely unwrapped it there, but I absolutely love the color. <gasps> that is very me. Right, let's unwrap it properly. Oh, that is so nice. I have got a robe that's like a slinky sort of floral robe like this, but it's really, really short and I would never dream of wearing it on its own because it's just too short. So when I saw that they did like a, a maxi style one, I thought I would go for the longer option. I love that. The fabric is beautiful. It's got one of those little ribbons inside so that you can tie it. There we go. Love that. That is really pretty. And they've also been kind enough to send me a scrunchie as well. Oh, it's really thick. It's in like a really nice like grey purpley colour. Or is it just grey? Hello. Paddy likes the smell of it. Sent me a nice scrunchie as well, so get off. As <laughs> soon as I put something that he's never seen before on, he's just like, that's it. He wants to play with it. But yeah, love that. Oh, it's a nice tight one as well. Get off me. Yeah, I love that. Right, cheers really for you. I just thought I'd give you a little bit more information about the brand Uliveri. As you can see, they have a stunning website with lots of gorgeous loungewear pieces, robes and pyjamas with lots of different beautiful prints in this lovely smooth silky fabric. 
As a brand, they believe that beauty is in the eye of the beholder and that we should all challenge ourselves to try something new, whether that's a different style or aesthetic. They have kindly given me a 20% discount code, which I will put on screen now. They've actually challenged me to have a go at drawing one of the flowers from the fabric. So what I might do is, I do my own nails and they very much need doing. And I wanted to get some nail decals, but they can be a little bit pricey. And my cousin had a great idea. She was like, why don't you just try and print some yourself? And I was like, that's such a good plan because I actually have a printer. So I bought some like decal paper and I might have a go at like drawing a flower and then making a decal and putting it on my nails. thought that would be quite a fun challenge. So I'll probably do that later, like once I've done all of my work for the day. So I've got a few more bits that I want to do today. Um, I need to finish Skylar's portrait, which is one of my Christmas commissions. And I need to make a start on packing an order for Danny. If you happen to be watching, hi Danny. <laughs> He's done a few big orders on my website this past few months. And I'm ever so grateful for the generosity of just how many things that you've purchased from me i really really appreciate it oh by the way this weekly planner i bought from another fellow colored pencil artist alison chin i'll show you her details this came with the package so i post her new autumn collection on instagram and i loved this planner i've been after something like this for a while i almost considered making myself some i've just not had time but i thought this one was really beautiful so I bought it. I really like the little autumn pumpkins and hedgehog and stuff. So yeah, love this. I've been finding it really useful for planning my week out. Okay, so this is the order. It's for six kingfisher mini prints, 10 mini pheasant prints and a fox and clover uh, larger print. So it came through yesterday and I've spoken to him a few times and he's not like too fussy about the dispatch being really fast. So I'm going to take my time to make these prints over the next few days, but I think I might start out with, let's do the Kingfisher ones. I've just had a count and I've got 13 pieces of my print paper left. So I'm going to have to order some of those today because I'll need them for my craft fair next weekend as well. This is the print paper that I use, by the way. Annoyingly, I feel like I can only do one at a time, otherwise it gets like the paper jammed, uh, so I have to like keep my eye on it and keep putting paper back in it, but yeah, this printer wasn't built for like bulk making, I don't think, but other than that, I do love this printer, it's great for what I need it for at the minute. It's just done a mad zoomy all over the house, absolute sausage. No, not finished. Oh God. Come on, enough. <laughs> I've been doing my soup in the slow cooker recently and it's been so much better. If I leave it on for like a few hours, it just tastes so good. I've got sweet potato, carrot, parsnip, leek and onion in there. So that should be nice. <laughs> So good job, I bought a load of mounts. I got 25 square ones. I got 10 A4, well, eight by 11 inch to 11 by 14 ahead of the craft fair. I've been reinvesting like every little penny that I make from the shop back into my shop. So whenever I make an order, I use that money to go ahead and buy more stock. So trying to grow the business as much as possible. And it's because of all of your orders that I've been able to do that. So thank you so much. And yeah, it just means that they're a little bit cheaper to buy when you buy a, like a bulk load of them. So it's been really good to be able to do that for a change because I never usually get to do that. So yes, I've got plenty of these to work with and I'm going to mount these little Kingfisher prints now. Right, I just thought I would chat to you a little bit while I do these mounts. So I've got my tapes. Got my mounts, got one left from last time here and I'm just going to get on with this. I've got a few videos on how I mount my prints for anyone who's interested and hasn't seen this process before. I find it quite like repetitive sometimes sharing it so I won't go into any details but yes, I am really really pleased with how the online shop is going at the minute. It's something that I've wanted to sort of put more work into for years but until 
I started printing from home, it was really difficult to do that. So it's given me more control over what I can do. And it's lovely to send out more of my artwork to go into your homes. So I've really been enjoying the online shop side of things. I'm a bit unsure of how much stock to get ready for my craft fair next weekend. Like, I don't want to go over the top, but it was really busy last year, so I don't want to be too short on stock to take with me. Hmm. It's always a difficult one, that, isn't it? But I sold some larger prints a couple of weeks ago to a lovely customer who already had some frames in the home. Uh, I had to get them off printed.com because I can't print to the size that she needed. But cute. To cut long story short, she sent me some photos of the prints in situ in her home in the frames and she has some colourful mounts in the frames and they look so good with coloured mounts. So I think I'm going to start offering those. I've ordered some mount samples from... Brampton Framing, which is where I get all of my mounts from. Got some like sage green, like a grey. I think that might be a nice like little addition to add to my print offering. So the only problem is I don't really have much storage space in this house, so I can't go too crazy on like the amount of stuff that I'm gonna offer in the online shop. I think I need to like seriously think about where it's all gonna go, but yeah, we have been looking at houses, to be honest. I like the idea of moving, probably in the new year now. It's a bit, it's a bit too late in the year to start faffing around with moving. But yeah, somewhere that I could have my own studio space would be ideal. I do miss having my own space. I'll never ever take that for granted ever again. <laughs> but yeah, it would be lovely to have my own little space where I don't need to worry about filming. I can just do it whenever I want. I can have extra shelving for my products. And I'd love to have a second desk as well, like a packing desk where I can do all that without having to move my drawing stuff off my drawing desk every time. It would just be a bit more efficient. Like I'd like to be able to get through things a little bit quicker instead of having to faff around, but all in good time. I'm not going to rush into moving for the sake of it. But we want to make sure we find the right place and stuff. So that's one down. I've also got some cellophane sleeves now for my prints. So that saves a lot of time. I used to individually wrap each one with cellophane. Oh, hello, buddy. I just don't have the time to do that, really. It's much quicker to use the cellophane bags and I'm going to do another order and get some more cellophane sleeves for my cards, for the craft fair, and also I'm going to get some sleeves for my larger prints. Oh, I feel like my hair has gone so bushy. I was so annoyed about that draw with me video that I uploaded where all the voiceover got jumbled up. Oh, do you know what the worst part was? I'd already deleted the video off my iMovie, so I had to completely re-edit it from scratch. Which, it didn't take as long as I expected it to, but I was just like, why Why did I do that? The annoying thing is that iMovie, if the voice clips are too close together, it sort of jumbles up the speech, like it'll overlap my voice, and then it'll sound like there's two of me. And if I like ever so slightly edit the videos, make them a bit like shorter or longer, it moves the whole voiceover to like further up in the video. So it like, it jumbles it all together. So I have to be so careful once I've added voiceover, not to edit the actual video itself. But it's like, sometimes I want to change things and then it, I will do the slightest change and it just completely muddles up the whole video. So there's something therapeutic about doing mountain though. I do quite enjoy it.
I've actually been asked to do my first ever sponsored Instagram post. I've never done one of those before. I've never done any sponsored content. I've done like collaborations where I've been sent stuff, but never where a brand has offered to pay money for a sponsored post. And the company is called Frame It. And they've not asked me to mention it in my YouTube or anything like that. It was literally just a sponsored reel on Instagram. But I'm that impressed by it that I just thought it was worth a mention. It's like an app that allows you to mock up your artwork into a frame that you can then add to an interior. Like you can do a living room mock up with the art on the wall. You can do different mount colours. And they've actually just DM'd me. I sent them a first draft of it and they said it's a bit too long. So I'm going to have to figure out how I can make it shorter now. Yeah, it's, it's really good and I'm gonna use it to do all of my product photos now. So I've just edited a couple of mock-ups on Frame It and these are specifically the ones that I want to change. So these are the mock-ups that I created myself using Affinity Photo and I basically found a photo of paneling, changed the colour to green, found a mock-up of these little clips added them on top and then added this with a shadow and stuff so I had to do it all manually myself and I'm gonna get rid of these now even though I do quite like them but I'm gonna add the ones that I've just done on frame it and these are the ones that I've just done on frame it I really like this frame style that I've chosen I think that with the color of the background is very me and it gives you the option to add like different lighting so I've added like a sort of gallery spotlight kind of thing above it and I've also been able to do one of these with the little clip on the line again I think that looks quite minimal and nice just for displaying the print on its own but yeah I love that I'm gonna do that now with the fox one too there we go and that is the fox and clover one done I really really like this style I just think it looks so nice I think I'm gonna do the barn owl one now there we go that's the barn owl one done I think I'm going to call this the lookout. I don't always name my prints, but if I have a name that comes to me or if someone suggests a good name, then I do. But yeah, I quite like that name. Let me know what you think. This is what they look like on my actual online shop. I quite like that new style. I do think they look a little bit more effective. There's more depth in the, in the frame and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Okay, I frame it happy with the reel that I've done, so I'm going to post that later on tonight. For now, I'm going to work a little bit more on my commission. So this is Skylar, and the main thing that I want to do is just tweak these whiskers a bit, make them a little bit thinner. They're looking a little bit too intense. I'm going to get on with this now. I've taken a picture of the flower that I want to try and draw from my Uliveri robe. And I'll probably just do like more of a loose, sketchy type of drawing of that because I'm only going to be doing it tiny for my nails. I cannot wait to do my nails. They're looking so grown out. I don't like them getting too long. As soon as they get to this length, I'm like, oh, I feel like I can't do anything. I'm definitely a short nail kind of person but they've grown really long these are my natural nails they've grown so long recently right so i've taken this photo of one of the flowers and i'm using a piece of strathmore bristol vellum paper and i'm gonna have a go at doing like almost like a little watercolor style like little illustration nothing too detailed i mean it's not exactly a detailed piece anyway, so I don't need to worry about adding loads and loads of detail. So I'm gonna have a go at this now. so it's quite a basic sketch but that's all I really need for what I plan on doing so I'm gonna scan it in 
I'm going to have a play with this paper. Right, I'm just going to measure my nail to see how small it needs to be. So less than a centimetre. Okay, so I've made it teeny tiny and I've done four in case I end up like cutting them wrong or something. So I'm going to see how these print. So this is the paper I've got. I've not tried it yet. It's basically water decal paper so you can put the decals on different things. So it'd be interesting to see how it'd work for candles and stuff too. So yeah, lots of different things that you can do. Let's give it a go. Okay, I think they definitely need to be a little bit bigger and a little bit brighter. Oh, they look good now. I feel like they'll be nice and subtle on my nails. Hello, it is now Thursday today for me and it's a little bit chillier today, not gonna lie. I've done my Etsy order, I've done my social media, my two hours, and I've been printing cards all morning in the background. And I just thought I would update you on my coloured pencil workshop in December. So I now have six people booked on and I made the executive decision this morning to change it to sold out and not have those extra two tickets available because I originally made eight tickets available and because it's now the 16th of November, we're getting closer and closer to Christmas. I'm getting a little bit anxious about how quick the time goes and how much other stuff I have to do. So I'd rather for the first one have six people because i always said six people would be a good number for me and that way i can start buying things and getting everything ready so i can get all the colored pencils ordered and have them here ready to go i think i'd feel a lot lot better if i had the colored pencils i've already got the paper i'm gonna use the strathmore bristol vellum i just thought for peace of mind and so that i can get organized i just want to cap it off at six people and at least that way I know that I'm going to be able to like get round and chat to everyone and help everyone individually. So yeah, I just thought I'd update you on that because I made that decision this morning. I'm really, really pleased with having six people attend. So hopefully everyone will actually be all right to turn up on the night and like nobody will be ill or anything like that. But that should be fun. I'm actually looking forward to it. I'm going to take Paddy for a little walk out now, I think if he allows me <laughs> and i'll post my etsy order and then come back and get on with some other bits come on then I'm back from my walk now. I've had a little bit of lunch and I'm going to get on with drawing some more of Eleanor's portrait now. But I just thought I would show you before I do that I ordered some coloured mount samples to see how they'd look with my prints. So I ordered a few different ones. Already I can tell which ones I like the most, but they're from Brampton Framing and that is the sage green one. Love that one. By the way, as you can tell, I didn't end up doing my nails last night. By the time I'd made tea and stuff, I was just like, oh, I can't be bothered now. I have to really be in the mood to be able to do them. So anyway, yeah, got a sage green one. This one's called Mushroom. It's kind of like a beigey, sort of like peachy pink colour. That one's blue, probably a little bit too dark for me. That's a bright pink and that is like a rusty red sort of colour. And I think I definitely like these two the best. I think they're most, the most me. I would like a blue colour that's like in that same sort of tone, like a really pale colour, but I don't think they have any like that. But yes, I think that will be really interesting to try them next to my prints. I might order some at some point and see how they do with the coloured mounts. Look at this big old pile of greeting cards that I've got now. That's going to be a fun day when I put them all together next week. So I'm going to make a start on the pheasant prints. I need to do 10 of those. Right, that came out a little bit too vibrant. So I'm going to try it again. Turn the vibrance and saturation down and see how it looks. There we go. I think that one looks much more natural and the colours look a lot 
truer to the original, so I'm going to stick with the settings for this one. I'm going to go for these ones today. It's Friday today and I feel a little bit lost this morning because the Wi-Fi has decided not to work so I can't do my usual routine of doing my freelance work first. So, so I'm going to start on my next Christmas commission which is of two sausage dogs, my favourite breed so that'll be a fun one to do and I'm going to begin with the outline and then hopefully get some colour done. I wanted to add my Patreon poll results up today for the reference photo. We'll be drawing a red squirrel in the snow so that'll be really fun. I'm gonna have to wait until the wi-fi is back on again hopefully praying that it'll come back on this afternoon and then I can get on with the rest of that later. It's gonna have a bit of a chilled morning drawing really so I won't show you what I'm drawing because it is a Christmas gift and I wouldn't want to risk ruining it. So yeah, I'll catch up later on. It's now Monday. I thought I'd do an extra day on the vlog because I feel like there was a few things that I didn't finish on Friday. The internet ended up being off all weekend and it didn't come back on till last night, which was Sunday. So there were quite a few things that I didn't get done that I wanted to do. So I'll do those today. But yeah, I didn't end up finishing filming my nails either because the water decals ended up disintegrating so they were stressing me out a little bit so i think i missed out quite an important step i had a look at the instructions and it said to add an acrylic spray onto the print once it was done and i didn't end up doing that so maybe that's why they just fell apart when i put them in water but yeah they look quite cute anyway little short nails with green tips so maybe next time i'll be able to figure out how to do the decal <laughs> but for now hey ho they're all right as they are i didn't end up doing the patreon poll results because obviously the wi-fi wasn't working and i also need to finish off danny's order i've had another print order come through as well actually that i need to get started with but we'll finish that one first for the vlog and yeah i'll probably start the craft fair prep tomorrow so that'll be a new craft fair vlog getting started then too so yes i should probably get on with the patreon poll results now and then i can do the line drawing later on I always do it twice just in case I've miscounted but it looks like number four is the winner so I'll show you which reference that is. So it was between these four and that is the winner. How interesting. I always love seeing which ones everyone picks. I'll just move that a second so you can see. I would have gone with this one but I'm happy to do any of these. These are all photos by Keith Bannister. So yeah, that is the one that we're drawing for Christmas. Okie dokie, so I've posted the winning reference and left a link to the image. And I've also done a poll for the Fundamentals members to decide which focus section they wanna work on because Fundamentals tier always work on a small section of the larger advanced tutorial so advanced members draw the whole thing but yeah this is going to be like a snowy red squirrel because i couldn't really find many images of red squirrels in the snow on like free stock websites so i thought i would use one of the more unique images by keith bannister because he allows me to use any of his pictures which is really generous of him and I thought it'd be quite a fun challenge to use like a bit of artistic license and add a bit of our own snow especially because of the technique I discovered with the museum aquarelle white pencil so that is what we'll be doing and we'll probably add like a little bit of snow to this stump as well like a bit more of like a chunky bit of snow <laughs> so that should be fun this is our next tutorial I'll also show you the finished pheasant now that it's all done too there we go so this is the finished drawing i'm really happy with it i've not actually scanned it in yet that's something that i need to do but yeah i'm really pleased with how it turned out i think this is quite a fun tutorial and this is going to look nice on like products 
bookmarks, stuff like that. So I'm excited to get that scanned in actually. That is the last tutorial that we did. So if you're interested in drawing that one, head over to my Patreon. The fundamentals to you did like a section of the wing feathers. So yeah, obviously advanced did the full thing, but, but that is that. So I'm going to get on with some packing now. So these are the 10 pheasant prints that I printed out that I need to mount and pack and I just thought I'd show you some of these like coloured mounts next to the artwork so it just makes it look a little bit more colourful. I quite like that green one, that is my favourite. Obviously it'd have like the little bevel or whatever they call it but it's just for an example with the colour I do actually quite like that, that could be quite effective. I'm not going to count that out because I do like that with the colours of the pheasant. These two I'm not sure about, that pink especially, that's not very me. It's a little bit like Barbie pink, I don't know if that's a bit too bright but yeah I suppose that blue one could be quite nice. But a bit more of a pale blue would be perfect I think. But yeah let me know which is your favourite, I think definitely these two, definitely. So probably going to order them after I've done the craft fair. Look at this sleepy little boy. Oh, you've had such a tiring morning. I've just packaged up the portrait that I was working on last week as well so that'll be going to its forever home this Christmas to be gifted so yeah I'll be able to show you everything that I've done for Christmas once everything's been gifted over on my Instagram so make sure that you're following me on there if you're interested in all of the commissions that I've been working on. I then finished off the day by heading to the post office, coming home and drawing out the red squirrel outline. I really hope you've enjoyed joining me for this studio vlog. Please make sure to give it a like if you enjoyed it as it really helps me out. Subscribe to see more videos like this and I shall see you in the next one. So bye for now.